cursed guns in history. Since the beginning of civilization, humans have been inventing tools and weapons, from a flint axe and spearheads in the Stone Age to nuclear weapons in modern times, mankind has continually tried to improve and build new weapons that would give them an advantage over their enemies on the battlefield. The introduction of firearms marked the beginning of the most exciting chapter in the history of weapons. During this period, there were a lot of guns that were to be iconic of their era. But on the other hand, there were more than enough guns that carried the title of the worst contraptions in history. This is the story of five of the top worst guns. But now, let's take a moment to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Mech Arena. Join us in this amazing PvP mech shooter game where you can battle it out with your friends or random players using deep combat tactics and limitless customization. Depending on your playstyle, this unique multiplayer battle game lets you choose an upgrade from a wide range of mechs, skins, and firearms to outperform your opponents. Choose your best combination of speed and firepower to dominate on the field. Select one of our two favorite mechs, Shadow with its stealth ability, which makes it almost impossible to hit and uses its speed to get behind enemies to shoot them in the back. Or select Stalker that can increase his damage by 50% with his Predator Call ability. But be careful of the damage taken increase as well. If you're sneaky, this thing's a beast. Try out the brand new Pilot Maverick in a newly upgraded Paradise Plaza map, Brazilian Carnival event, and St. Patrick's Day event where you can win exclusive St. Paddy's Day skins, a new Pilot helmet, and much, much more. So jump in and download this free PvP game for Android and iOS using the link in the description, or scan the QR code to get one mil spec skin, 500 A coins, and 70,000 credits to help kickstart your game. Colt Model 1855 Revolving Carbine The Colt Model 1855 Revolving Carbine was truly an example of how a brilliant design could go horribly wrong. In the mid-19th century, the American Colt Company established itself as a leader in manufacturing revolvers, its handguns being the finest available. Following the success of these, the Colt engineers tried to adapt the revolving chamber into a rifle design. The project's purpose was to increase the firepower of the U.S. cavalry units of the time, which still used single-shot rifles. The result was a percussion cap revolving carbine, the Model 1855 a revolver-looking carbine that had its round barrel fitted to a metal frame, while the cylinder was set within a closed-frame design. It was manufactured in four different barrel lengths, 15, 18, 21, and 24 inches, and three different calibers, 36, 44, and 56. Depending on what type, the cylinders were made to hold five or six rounds. Although the Colt engineers believed their design to be a success, it proved to be a complete failure for one reason alone. Firing the percussion cap ammunition generated a lot of hot gases, which, because of the cylinder's design, often found their way into the remaining chambered rounds. This led to cooking off, effectively setting off the live rounds that would fire straight out of the cylinder itself and hit any part of the gun's mechanism that was in front of them. Even though the U.S. Army adopted the Model 1855, it had a short service life. The rifle was not popular among soldiers because of the numerous cook-off incidents where the soldiers had their forearms and faces burnt and injured. They would avoid firing the gun with their left hand, holding the forend to take an aim shot in case it got burnt or worse. Only around 4,400 copies were made, making this weapon one of the worst Colt designs ever. Mars Pistol At the turn of the 20th century, revolvers began to make way for a new type of firearm, the pistol. The early period of this era was marked by some iconic designs, such as the Colt 1911, but also by some rather unsatisfactory attempts. One such was the Mars Pistol manufactured by the renowned British Webley Company. Mars was actually not a Webley product, but a design of Mr. Hugh Gabbett Fairfax, who made a deal with the Webley company to only manufacture this pistol for them. Gabbett Fairfax's idea to make a self-loading pistol resulted in a heavy and complex construction that resembled a small cannon. Everything about the Mars pistol was unorthodox. The top of the magazine had a steel finger that covered the topmost cartridge, meaning the only way to remove the cartridge from the magazine was by pulling it backwards and up into the breech block. The total capacity of the magazine was only six rounds, no more than a standard revolver. 
The breech block comprised an overcomplicated rotating mechanism and an external hammer. Upon firing, it recoiled along with the barrel and was held at the back of the frame. Once the barrel returned, the extractor would eject the empty case upwards, often straight into the shooter's face. The pistol was made in three different calibers, 8.5mm, 9mm, and 45. The 45 version was, at the time, the most powerful pistol in the world. That, however, turned out to be yet another problem, because the pistol jumped wildly at each shot, making it very unpleasant to use. A record from one trial noted that, quote, nobody who fired this pistol wished to fire it a second time. That was why both the War Office and the Royal Navy refused to accept it for service. Ultimately, no more than 70 Mars pistols were made before its designer went bankrupt. Glissenti Model 1910 Even though unwieldy, the Mars pistol was designed to withstand the power of the 45 cartridge. Unlike the Italian pistol Glissenti Model 1910, which was too feeble to deal with the 9mm round it was designed for, the Model 1910 was made to meet the requirements of the Italian Army to replace the obsolete Bodeo service revolver. The new pistol was the improved version of the Model 1906, which was chambered for the weaker 7.65mm cartridge. The problem was the Glicenti's construction was not sturdy enough to withstand the power of the standard 9mm by 19mm Parabellum cartridge. Firing such a powerful round caused the pistol's receiver to explode. The Italians did find a solution by introducing a special cartridge for the pistol, the 9mm by 19mm Glicenti. The cartridge was of the same dimensions as the 9mm Parabellum, but with a weaker propellant charge and significantly reduced stopping power. Compared to other 9mm pistols, the Glicenti was too weak. The Model 1910 was known for another unusual feature. On its left side, it had a plate that could be removed to clean the mechanism. It was a rather convenient feature, but one that largely contributed to the overall weakness of the pistol's frame, and also the plate often opened on its own during firing. The Glicenti Model 1910 was accepted for service in the Italian Army, despite all its drawbacks. However, with the low stopping power and a magazine only containing seven rounds, it had no real advantage over the Bodeo revolvers. Indeed, many Italian officers decided not to replace their old sidearms with the Glicenti. Although the pistol remained in service throughout World War II, it was only as a second-grade weapon. Gyrojet – Rocket-Propelled Pistol The history of guns has seen some quite peculiar examples due to the constant tendency to try to improve existing and creating new gun concepts. That was how the gyrojet pistol was made, one of the most unconventional guns ever. Although it had a slightly futuristic look to it, the gyrojet appeared to be just like any other pistol. However, it was anything but an ordinary gun. The MBA associates from California made the gyrojet an alternative to conventional pistols. Namely, instead of inert projectiles propelled by a gas explosion, the gyrojet fired rocket-propelled bullets. To cater for the type of rounds it used, the gyrojet had a unique firing mechanism. Six microjet rounds were fed into the chamber from the magazine inside the grip. A hammer would strike the rocket on the nose upon pulling the trigger, driving it back against the firing pin. Once ignited, the rocket would blast through the barrel with angled vents. The purpose of these vents was to release the blast pressure and spin the rocket. Because there was no gas pressure within the barrel and chamber, the system allowed for a lighter construction and produced almost no recoil. So what were the features that made the gyrojet such a poor gun? Firstly, the rounds were too expensive to produce. Considering the fact that MBA tried to sell the pistol to the army, the government would have been forced to spend a fortune on ammunition if the soldiers carrying the gyrojets were engaged in long-term conflicts. Moreover, apart from the high maintenance cost, the pistol showed poor accuracy and a significant fall-off in velocity once the rocket was burned out. All in all, the gyrojet was an interesting concept, but completely impractical. It appeared on the market in 1965, but the American Armed Forces never accepted it for service. Nambu 94 
To be accepted into service in the armed forces, a gun usually has to meet a certain criteria for quality and performance requirements. Occasionally, batches of poor quality firearms found their way to frontline combat units. However, there haven't been many cases that an entire army was equipped with a faulty gun. That was the case with the Imperial Japanese Army in World War II and the infamous Nambu Type 94 pistol. It first appeared in 1934 as a replacement for the older Nambu Type 14 pistol. At the time, Japan had already begun its expansion into Asia, and the army required large quantities of sidearms, and they wanted it as soon as possible. The result was probably the worst pistol ever made in the history of firearms. From the offset, the Nambu 94 was a poorly designed pistol of extremely low quality. Once the Japanese war industry became overstretched, its quality reduced to the level of a handicraft. In addition, the pistol had awful ballistic performance. Because of the lack of balance between the short barrel and the power of the round, the Nambu 94 was only effective at close range. However, the real problem was that the pistol was extremely unreliable and a real threat to the welfare of its user. The Nambu 94 mechanism was designed in such a manner that it allowed an accidental misfire of the round before it was fed into the chamber. Another threat was the lever mounted on the outer left side of the pistol. The lever connected the trigger with the firing pin, and if pressed against something hard while the mechanism was cocked, the pistol would fire. Obviously, the pistol posed more of a threat to those who used it than to the target on the other side of the barrel. There were stories of the gun being nicknamed the Suicide Special or the Surrender Pistol, as it was reckoned that if a Japanese soldier was surrendering as he was handing the gun over on its side, he could press the sear and therefore fire off one last round. This was probably a myth, because if a Japanese soldier was actually going through the pretext of surrendering, he would have something worthwhile on his person like a hand grenade to detonate to try to kill as many of the enemy as he could, as well as himself. Despite all the drawbacks and poor quality, the Imperial Japanese Army kept using the pistol until the end of the war. Around 70,000 copies were made until 1945, with the manufacturing quality decreasing each year. The Japanese carried on using the Nambu 94 because their industry had neither the time nor the resources to produce anything else.